Okay, so what are we doing here? The point of all of this was to mount this uh, Makita spindle, or the spindle is going to hold the Makita router. It's, uh, I think, 62, 63 millimeters in diameter, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Um, anyways, we tried it with the stock rods, um, and obviously the rods are, are pretty thin, and so there was a lot of bowing, flexing to it. Not very good if you want to cut aluminum. So we opted to put linear rails on here. So that's going to hopefully solve the problem of the bowing of the rod, since we're not going to use the rods anymore. We're going to attach these linear rails. But I went one step further to the linear rails here. We have a new Z axis that came complete with a real beefy um, rod and motor. Um, so we, this is going to be our Z axis. The motor here is on the top and basically this is just one beefy unit and it weighs a bit. So those rods wouldn't have been able to support this. I mean, it would have just bowed the rods even more. So the linear rails are important to us. Now, how are we going to mount this to the carriage blocks and the um, linear rails, you know, to the channel here? I think this is what, 30, 40 um, channel. So to, in order to do that, I 3D printed an, a, a mounting plate. So someone else did the work on this. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, Someone else did the work on this, but I had to modify it. I modified the STL file to handle the uh, M4 screws that go here. Um, these M4 screws line up with these T-nuts on the Z-axis channel. So there's 20 millimeters. Um, I put a couple of washers there so the bottom of the 20 millimeter M3 bolt wouldn't um, hit the bottom of the channel here. Okay, so there's just a little tiny bit of clearance. So anyways, um, the other thing that I did with this is I like Delrin T-nuts rather than these copper ones. Um, I'm still going to use this for the backlash. That'll go in the recess here. So it'll just slide right in there. I'm still going to use this for the backlash, but um, for the front here, these little screws that are already... Um, printed in um, are a little bit little smaller than three millimeters. So these three millimeter screws in here, um, self tap in here. These are 20 millimeter in length M3s, and that's what holds this Delrin um, T nut. So it's really sturdy. Um, the recess is still there underneath if I want to go back to copper, but I love Delrin. There's a lot less play with the rod inside of Delrin compared to. The copper, at least for me, in my opinion. So that's why I went with Delrin here. So let's go ahead and put this all together now that you know what we're all about and take it from there. Oh, before I go further, note that I had a cut. So these rails, I'll give you the dis in the description, the link to Amazon. I had a cut. Um, you know, a bit off of them for them to fit in between the, the, uh, the frame, um, the chassis here. So note that you're going to have to cut these rails to fit. Okay. So that's what happened there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is attach the carriage blocks here that way you can make sure that they slide nicely and they don't bind and then we'll attach the rails to the channel and then we'll attach the z-axis um, to the mounting plate so the carriage blocks fit inside the recess area here I'm using 10 M3, 10 millimeter in length um, bolts.
Okay. Well, now that we've got the carriage blocks mounted, we can mount the railings. Before we mount the railings, though, I think what I might do is go ahead and it'll be easier to mount this on the table and then we'll mount the railings onto the channel. So I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. So I made these holes here just a tad bit under three millimeters using 20 millimeter um, M, uh, M4 um, screws in here, um, but they're tight, um, but they can still spin inside the hole, but they're tight. So that way I don't run the risk of them getting loose and popping out. So you should always check before you run anything to make sure that all your bolts are, are tightened down though, just in case. What I'm doing is I'm tightening these down just so they can hit the T-bolt in place. And then once I know that, or the T-nut, and now I know that I'm, they're hitting the T-nut and the T-nut's all the way to the bottom, I'm lift it up just a little bit and move it down and it falls straight into the thread. Okay, there we go. I eyeballed the last two screws because I couldn't lift it up high enough um, to move it above the T-bolts. Okay, so now that we've got this in place, um, it's a matter then of mounting the rails to the channels here and then tightening up these screws once we decide um, the positioning of this Z-axis, where how, how far down it's going to go. But once we get the rails on, we can tighten um, these screws um, here uh, from behind. I believe I have enough clearance if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be able to tighten these screws down and tighten the z-axis from behind. All right. So I'm going to just tighten these just a bit for now so the z-axis doesn't move around. All right, there we go. Okay. So you can see how this is gonna slide along these linear rails, really nice. Okay. So we hold these linear rails to the channel using three millimeter T-nuts and um, eight millimeter M3 screws. And how many screws is the question? How many we're gonna use? I'm gonna skip every other one, so we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So about ten. Okay. I didn't tighten them completely. I left them just a little bit loose. So I'll 
go ahead and tighten them in a second. Just want to make sure that there's no binding. See how the, they're binding a little bit right there. Um, but I also need to put this left side in play here as well. So before we do that, um, so that's why I want to leave these a little bit loose to make sure this slides well after I put this in place because that's going to create, you know, um, a little separation between the two channels here. So we'll do that in a second. Um, what I want to do right now before we do that is go ahead and put the threaded rod in. I've done this first because this backlash I want to push it in as much as I can. Let me see if I can still do this. can't see this but I'm tightening the coupler to the threaded rod on the back side here okay so now go ahead and put this in place here a little bit loose and let's get the binding oops let's get the binding out of this so I'm gonna I shouldn't have done this red draw just yet I'm loosening it right now I should have waited to take the binding off of the rails before I put this threaded rod in here. Okay, I'm not taking it completely out because I can still slide this with the rod in place. All right. and these screws up a little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this where it's at. All right, I think we're good there. Not too bad. We'll just put some ceramic grease along the rail here to help it just a little bit more. But, all right, so you can see now, you know, unlike before, where there was flex you can see there is no flex outside of the frame which will tighten down here on the bottom um, there's no flex whatsoever here that is tight so that's what we want so we'll put this rod back and tighten it down at the coupling in the back Okay, 
So I brought the spindle, well, the, the Z axis here all the way down to the bottom. And this gets mounted on here. And so this um, pickup piece here for the air, for the uh, suction is below the table. So we're gonna raise this up a little higher. So this just doesn't, just barely doesn't hit the table. And then that's where we'll mount this. So we're going to take uh, these screws back here, loosen them up and raise this up a bit. Okay, so let's see about getting this on here. So I already put, these are 20 millimeter length screws, M4. That's what this takes, is M4 screws on the front. So basically, we're just gonna go ahead and screw these guys in. And I made these holes that these screws sit in just a tad under four millimeters so the screws are in there snug so this way they don't easily vibrate um, off you know or get loose at least not really easy All right, so I didn't put the magnets on here yet, but we can still get this to where we want to go. Okay, so I just want this nozzle the pickup nozzle that just barely get off the table here. So that's how low I'm going to bring this. So this is where this is going to sit. Okay, Maybe just a tad bit higher. So now we're ready to tighten the screws on the back. All right. Okay, so there's the X and Z axis. This is uh, really nice. There's no play in this outside. I haven't tightened the left side of the frame yet and I'll show you why in a second. But there's no play, there's no backlash in terms of um, up and down because of this and this is really, really thick. And the linear rails here prevent the slop that we had earlier, so. Let's go ahead and turn this on and
All right, so that's looking really good. That's looking good. All right, so what are we doing here? Why haven't I put these back on? Well, actually, I'm going to take this one off on the other side as well. We're going to slide this whole um, x-axis off because I have an extension, a Y extension kit here that we're going to put on. And um, so we're going to take this front off. I'm going to take this front piece off and take the two side channels off and we're going to extend it. We have these new channels that we're going to put on, a new center rod, and a big plus. So instead of these, since we're extending it, instead of these smaller rods here, okay, these are the stock ones. Instead of using the extension rods, we bought ourselves some thicker rods along with the bearings and the bearing holders. That'll make the Y axis very sturdy. You can see the difference in thickness between the stock and the, uh, and the aftermarket rods that we got. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to extend the white chassis and then we can call it done. So. All right. So I'm going to take this off here. screw the rods take out the center the the threaded rod the side so yeah let's start with this
Okay, I have a special um, anti-backlash um, mount here. It looks like it's made of Delrin, but uh, yeah, this is just a lot better than, I, I, I don't like the brass. I like the, uh, I like the Delrin uh, much better. There's less chatter on it in my point of, in my opinion. On this also, you can adjust the tightness of the rod between the two using this set, this uh, nut and bolt combination here. But I already tested it just as it came and it's already pretty nice just the way it is. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yep. All right. That's where we're going to settle. Okay, so we got this together now. All right, there we have it. That is a nice long y-axis so now let's try this with the spindle with the or with the router okay. here we go that's nice That's where I want that to be, right there. Okay, that's good. Okay, look at this. There is, <laughs> there is no play in this, thanks to those linear rails and this beefy Z-axis. I mean, zero. Let's get this a little closer so you can see. I mean, very negligible of any. I mean, this is outstanding. So that's what we wanted. 
and the Y axis has these beefy, beefy rods here. So, I mean, this will, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I, I have experience with CNC's and there's no doubt this will cut aluminum um, really nice, just the way it's configured right now. So let's go ahead and just test all the axes, make sure that everything works. Okay, so I think we can wrap this video up now that we've got everything in place here. So let's take a quick tour of our axes. So here's the X axis. Let me set the spindle a little higher up. So there's the X. Here we have the Y. So you can see the table moving. And then we've got the Z axis here. Very, very nice and smooth. So, all right, let's stop this guy here. All right, I set the steps up a little too high for the Z axis, but you get the point. So anyways, to wrap this whole thing up here, let's shut this thing off. To wrap this whole thing up here, what did we do? Um, we basically uh, upgraded our Y axis, um, lengthening it. We put in, uh, uh, I think these are, I think these are 15 millimeter diameter rods that we put in here. I know they're about two or three millimeters um, bigger than the stock rods that are in there. I think the stock rods in there are, are 12 millimeters. So these gotta be 15, something like that. Don't hold me to that. But bottom line is we upgraded our, our, our Y axis rods. They're very thick, you know, very meaty, extended the Y axis. So we have a longer bed now. We installed uh, linear um, rails. Um, in the back here, got rid of those cheap little rods that bent because of the weight of the Makita router, because this is very heavy. We made a custom uh, mount for the linear rails and for the new Z axis that we got. Very beefy, very powerful, very thick threaded rod on it, capable of holding the Makita router. You can see there is no, there, this is just crazy. There just is no slop in it. This is really, really tight, really nice. Um, the next video I'll take is, I'll actually start cutting some aluminum. This video has already run longer than I wanted it to, so it's kind of lengthy and my rambling doesn't help either. But um, what we got to do here basically is we have, the, I'll be putting together the, the little brushes on this for the dust collector. The dust collector basically um, fits underneath here. I mean, with this line axis here. Um, it's held together by magnets underneath that I haven't installed yet, but you can see that that's how the dust collection is gonna work. The vacuum plugs into the hose up here. And uh, anyways, so that's what we gotta finish up. The other thing that I did um, is I'm going to wire this. Um, I need to wire limit switches on this, but this is the um, shutoff, the emergency shutoff. So I 3D printed a casing for it based on the model that I saw on um, Thingiverse. This is my design though, um, because my switch is different than the one they used on Thingiverse. But the concept's still the same. It's held together by the T nuts on the top and on the side, so that'll get mounted here as well. So. Anyways, I think that's pretty much a quick wrap up of what we did. Very sturdy machine. It's ready to cut aluminum. Next video, we'll install the, uh, the limit switches, all the little accessories that are left. And then we will have a demo of it cutting, actually cutting, but really happy with how this turned out. So hope you got something out of this. Look at the description for links to everything that I used here. 
Some of these are my own custom 3D models um, based on, re they're actually remixes of someone else's work, hard work, I might add. Um, so, I'll, but I'll leave my own STL files um, on Thingiverse for the mount, for the new spindle um, uh, carrier, um, for the emergency switch along with the um, case for it. So you can find all of that in the description if you want to start delving into this and upgrading your 3018 CNC machine. So like I always say, enjoy life, live for today, peace out.